Thank you very much. Thank you for having us. And it's a really nice uh, meeting colleagues uh, uh, from other countries to discuss matters on the practical implementation of the Orcus Convention. So if you could please proceed the uh, uh, three slides uh, forward. I'm just going to uh, sum up some things about uh, our report. Uh, so the compilers, uh, WWF Greece and the Hellenic Ornithological Society, uh, BirdLife Greece are both uh, environmental NGOs, non-profit organizations established in Greece since the 80s and the 90s, uh, since, since the 90s and the 80s respectively, and uh, are both dedicated in uh, nature uh, preservation uh, for uh, the benefit of uh, biodiversity and uh, the people. So for uh, quite some uh, time now, both NGOs are deeply involved in uh, matters of environmental democracy, uh, as it is described, uh, both in uh, the proactive and reactive uh, way, and uh, take um, respective uh, initiatives. Uh, so next slide, please. Uh, in the framework of this initiative, the parties decided to submit the, I don't know, uh, yeah, that one, uh, decided to submit the, um, the, the shadow report, uh, which we discuss uh, today here, which was uh, submitted in April 2021. Uh, in this uh, reporting uh, uh, cycle. Uh, so this, uh, the report is about uh, specific examples of non adherence of the Greek authorities to certain obligations set out in the Orcs Convention with the purpose of ensuring better compliance and in turn better protection of the environment. It is structured in three sections, each one covering uh, uh, every pillar of the convention. Uh, each section showcases the NGO's assessment on certain decisions and actions of the Greek state, which, on, uh, which uh, in the opinion of the compilers, constitute breach of the relevant provisions of the conventions. So it is uh, the first time that uh, both compilers submit a, a shadow report. And uh, this is, uh, this, we can attribute this choice uh, mainly to two directions. First, okay, both compilers, we felt quite confident on the matters of uh, um, uh, interpretation of the Orcus uh, provisions. Uh, since it is uh, many years now that we are deeply involved in these matters and uh, following uh, the annual uh, reviews of the environmental legislation compiled by WWF Greece. And uh, also, uh, upon uh, reception of the uh, invitation by Ministry of Environment in Greece to uh, review the, the national report, I mean, the official national report, and submit comments, uh, both compilers, we felt that um, this wasn't a satisfactory report, and uh, we wanted to provide uh, our view uh, on uh, the discussed uh, matters. So I now pass to my colleague, uh, Anna. Thank you. So uh, to begin with, the first pillar of the Aarhus Convention, uh, providing for the access to environmental information. Um, on our report, we firstly focused on the active exercise of this right, uh, the granting of access by the public authorities, and we have showcased two examples uh, where the use of exemptions by public uh, authorities was not properly justified. The first case refers to the public power corporation. Thank you. Uh, so the Public Power Corporation in, is Greece's nat uh, national power company and operates the majority of Greece's highly polluting lignite mines and plants. Um, by virtue of law, special laws, um, a set of uh, six uh, large combustion plants is granted a single production permit and a single provisional operation permit, which includes the environmental permit. Um, WWF Greece filed uh, 
um, filed a, a letter to have access to the required documentation for the regularization of the permitting of all uh, lignite plants, which are included, which are provided this uh, single production permit. Uh, these documentations mainly include includes administrative documents, the application form, the environmental permit, and also topographic diagram, technical reports, and others. We filed this re request to the general directorates of the Minister of Environment, but uh, we were refused access to these documents on grounds of intellectual and industrial property rights. Uh, therefore, we addressed, uh, we filed a complaint to the Greek Ombudsman, uh, who uh, responded that the refusal of the public authorities was not properly justified. Uh, however, the Ministry of Environment insisted on refusing and also evoked additional grounds on public uh, safety reasons. The second case refers to the fracking case that we say. So um, a special committee, uh, a special committee by uh, within the General Secretariat of Energy uh, was formed with the purpose of conducting a research in relation to the existence of shale gas in Greece. Um, and it had concluded, uh, it had prepared two reports, an, inform an informative notice and, uh, and a report on the preliminary geological uh, study on the possibilities and prospects for locating possible geological formations of shale gas in Greece. WWF again uh, requested access to this report to public authorities, to the General Directorate of the Minister of Environment and the Institute of Geology and Mineral Exploration. This is also a public law institution. We did not receive a response. And then uh, after a lot of uh, uh, communications with uh, competent authorities, uh, the Institute of Geology uh, suggested that we uh, address this uh, request to the ministry, which we had already done. And uh, therefore, uh, due to this lack of response, we requested an order by the public prosecutor to access this report, uh, even though the order was granted uh, they, uh, they continue to refuse on the grounds of intellectual property rights. Uh, they also evoked that it was, uh, this report was incomplete, fragmentary data were used, and we could not be granted this report. In the end, uh, there was, uh, we acquired this, uh, this report by Media Leak. And uh, what we found out is that the report did not contain uh, financial or mineral estimates of any sort or any original information, but was entirely based on open bibliographical sources. So um, in our opinion, uh, these two examples showcase a breach of Article 4 of the Aarhus Convention and Article 24, Paragraph 2 of the Industrial Emissions Directive since uh, we requested the environmental information, administrative measures uh, and information on factors of the environment constitute environmental information, we filed them and addressed them to before public authorities. No justification of the delay uh, was reported. Um, of course, administrative documents by definitions are not covered by intellectual property rights exemptions. Um, and uh, we would like to remind that exemptions must be interpreted in a restricted way, restrictive way, which was not the case here, since uh, in the first case of the PPC case, we were uh, denied access uh, in global to the uh, documentation. Uh, we believe that uh, according to the provisions of the Aarhus Convention, uh, the public authorities could have separated the information that they uh, believe was subject to these exemptions. And the second uh, example of uh, this, uh, this example uh, refers to the, if we could say the passive exercise of this right, refers to the environmental uh, registries. 
uh, two examples here. Of course, the list is not exhaustive. Uh, we refer to the electronic registry of environmental permits and inspections, which is definitely not user friendly. It is only uh, authorized users who can have access to the environmental inspections. And the electronic environmental registry, uh, this is the digital environmental registry according to the national report, which hosts the life cycle of uh, circle of all environmental permits and the public consultation of projects. However, this is not user friendly. Prior registration is required and uh, um, inconsistent function has been reported don't, not only by us, but also from the general public. Um, we would like to reiterate the importance of retaining environmental registers that are accessible to everybody and that manage the environmental information in a clear and transparent way, which is not the case uh, with these uh, registries. So, um, regarding the public participation in the decision making process on environmental matters, the compilers have uh, focused on. Uh, uh, three separate cases of uh, uh, alleged breach of the Orcus Convention. The first one refers to um, uh, law number uh, 4685 of uh, 2020, which uh, was uh, an act uh, voted by the Hellenic Parliament during the first uh, pandemic uh, wave, and it, it constituted a major um, change of the uh, procedure for the environmental uh, permits, mostly, but it also affected other provisions of uh, environmental law, or national environmental law. And uh, by virtue of, a, of, uh, of an article of uh, this law, uh, the ex lege prolongation of all environmental permits by five years was granted for all existing um, permits. Um, what was new about this uh, law is that it inserted the concept of uh, change of circumstances in the sense that uh, if no change of circumstances is met, uh, each environmental permit should uh, be granted with a prolongation of five years. However, no explanation on this change of circumstances was ever uh, given by the law, nor uh, the competent authority who would decide on that was uh, 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 provided uh, as well. Um, this is an alleged breach of Article 6 and the Annex of the Convention, uh, in the opinion of the compilers, and also um, a provision not compatible with previous decisions of the Compliance Committee, especially regarding <coughs> the duration of the extension, uh, which by no means can be considered uh, minimal. Uh, there is now an uh, open infringement procedure uh, before the European Commission on these matters, and uh, results uh, are still expected uh, as it is going to be uh, met with a previous uh, infringement uh, procedure. Well, uh, um, there is also the case of uh, adoption of environmental plans without prior submission to a public consultation procedure. Okay, apart from several cases of adoption of environmental plans by specific legislation, such as spatial plans, etc., uh, which we will not uh, focus uh, on this presentation, there's also the uh, case of the Greek Transitional National Plan regarding large combustion plants. So, uh, these plans are provided by the uh, Directive on uh, Industrial Emissions and the relevant joint ministerial decision, which incorporated the uh, Directive in national legislation. Uh, so, uh, regarding the national plans, uh, there was no provision for public participation either prior to or during the drafting of the plan. And uh, no data were made, made uh, publicly avail available regarding the uh, national plans. Uh, on this occasion, WWF Greece and Client there submitted uh, a, a complaint of the um, Compliance Committee of the Orcus Convention 
uh, on the grounds of violation of Article 6 and 7 of the Convention. Also, another case uh, that uh, could possibly um, constitute a violation of the provisions of the um, um, <coughs> Convention is the uh, ministerial decision on the hunting activity, which takes place annually in, in Greece. Uh, we found two major defects in this procedure. The first uh, one uh, refers to, uh, um, to, to the lack of data, uh, of, of public data, uh, in an early and effective manner. So participants in the uh, uh, procedure can actually verify the scientific completeness, timeliness, and adequacy of the provided data on which the uh, ministerial decision is uh, decided upon. And also, there is no disclosure of the submitted comments upon the um, uh, issuance of the uh, decisions. So the participants can uh, actually get to know uh, who commented on what and what, uh, who suggested what on, on this uh, activity. Uh, and we now pass back to my colleague Anna. Thank you. Uh, as far as the third pillar is concerned, uh, access to justice. Um, of course, uh, approval of environmental permits is not, uh, um, is not inhibited by the Aarhus Convention, uh, as long as um, the public participation is uh, ascertained. In the, in the case that we mentioned earlier, uh, the PPC case, we were not, uh, the, the interested uh, parties were not uh, granted access to justice um, since uh, the, uh, the single permit, uh, uh, single permit, uh, single production permit and the single uh, operation permit were granted by special laws. Under Greek law, legislative acts are not subject to judicial review. Uh, however, uh, these permits constitute decisions, acts or omissions subject to the provisions of Article 6. Therefore, the lack of access of a review procedure before a court of law is a violation of Article 9. Uh, WWF Greece and Client Earth filed a complaint to, before the Aarhus uh, Compliance Committee on that matter. Uh, which is still pending. So this is more or less the summary of the, of the shadow report uh, by WWF and the uh, Ornithological Society. So we would like now to refer to the national report, the official report submitted by the Greek state, uh, which was uh, compiled uh, upon participation of public authorities, competent services, uh, the centralized administration and the NGOs. It had a uh, two periods of consultation, uh, the, the first one before the first draft and the second one uh, uh, six weeks long after the, uh, the submission of the first draft uh, opened for public consultation. Uh, there were some comments and the summary of them were incorporated in the final version of the report. And this is the fifth report uh, uh, to be submitted by um, uh, Greece. HOS submitted uh, uh, comments on this report, and WWF had uh, uh, submitted the comments in the previous report. So, to our opinion, and, and we now move on to the next slide, to our opinion, this is um, a report which is quite problematic, and uh, we would like to um, refer some. Uh, some points. Um, so uh, we realized that uh, throughout the report, uh, lack of sufficient resources, lack of uh, appropriate infrastructure, lack of funding are often used by the compilers of the report and uh, thus the Ministry of Environment and Energy to us um, obstacles to, for, for the Greek state to fulfill its obligations. However, this cannot justify the non-conformity with uh, arms convention or EU legislation. The Greek state is obliged to take any necessary measures uh, to deliver the goals uh, of the convention and not justify its adequacy. So 
Um, there is some commotion about uh, the concept of the environmental information, and uh, the, uh, there's a, a misconception maybe on behalf of the uh, administration. And um, it seems that um, uh, sometimes uh, the competent authorities face some problems on, on recognizing uh, the, the concept. On, uh, so um, this is what we get from the report. Regarding the participatory processes, uh, the Greek state recognizes those as uh, uh, some process that can a lot of uh, time and money affecting the time and implementation of the legislative act under public consultation. And, uh, and on the other hand, it uh, recognizes that there is some limited public ability and willingness to participate as well, uh, in some cases, the large number of relevant information and views. So it is to our I'm surprise that uh, the Greek state recognizes public consultation as a um, slow and costly procedure, while it, it, in our opinion it shouldn't be viewed like this, rather than uh, something that enriches the, the, the result uh, of, the, uh, of the respective uh, procedure. Uh, it, the state provides some statistical data on the public participation. It is true that these are uh, very low, and uh, we expect that uh, the public will, will participate even more actively in the years to come. We, we referred previously to the databases, and um, it, it is uh, to our uh, relief that uh, the ministry recognizes that. Uh, uh, those are not regularly updated, nor is there an established mechanism to determine the need for a revision, and it provides for an example. Um, and uh, it also recognizes the need of a further interoperability between database and registry. Uh, uh, there is a, a lack of effective public consultation for, um, uh, for some uh, plans. And uh, we also have uh, some input for, from the Hellenic Ombudsman who reported in previous report in Psyche that uh, it has received uh, numerous public complaints and petitions concerning denial to access to information. However, according to the report, currently there is no specific committee for review of refusal of access to environmental information, and that is true. So uh, if anyone feels that his or her uh, uh, procedural environmental rights are affected, uh, he can uh, he or she can use the uh, standard administrative procedure in order to uh, demand the fruitful uh, execution of his or her rights. Those are our closing remarks. Um, we believe that uh, there is still a long way uh, till the complete realization of environmental procedural rights in Greece. And in the present time of environmental crisis, it is more urgent than ever that the Greek state will shift from a culture of secretiveness and of treating public participation as time consuming and costly uh, to a new one of open data, uh, prior proper and effective public participation and adequate and effective remedies in case of violation of environmental rights. Thank you very much.